What is Redshift? Do you care? Yes, you do. Let me tell you why. Redshift is the light side of the Doppler effect, and Hubble's law relies upon this cosmic effect to explain the relationship between a galaxy's distance from us and its relative speed. To help explain this topic, I would like to greet my brother, the Canadian, um, Hoser. Uh, good to have you with us. Oh, it's no problem at all, eh? Let's look at an easier concept first. Sound. Referred to as the Doppler effect, I'm sure that you have experienced this yourself, eh? Hmm. Please, do explain. Well, if you think really hard about it, have you ever noticed that when a big old truck passes you on the highway and just really lets her buck, the sound starts out pretty low behind you, and then gets higher and higher until it passes you, and then lower the farther away it gets. This is because as the vehicle moves forward, the sound waves compress in front of it, causing higher frequencies in front and lower sounds behind. Very interesting. Perhaps I can expound on what you just said. For example, if we were standing, say, 500 meters apart, and an ambulance were to travel very quickly away from me but towards you, we would hear very different frequencies, in spite of the fact that the produced sound is the same. Now, how does that relate to light? Well, the same principle applies there, eh, bud? If an object like a star or a galaxy is moving very fast away from us, the electromagnetic waves, oh, that's light, appear to be more red than we know that they should be there. Because they're being stretched out, eh? The same principle applies if it's moving towards us, except for that it appears slightly blue. Oh, that's called blue shift, not red shift that's blue. Well then, why don't we see things like airplanes or vehicles, either red or blue, depending on which direction they are traveling? Our eyes are quite simply just not sensitive enough, eh? It takes some very specialized equipment to detect it at all. We didn't even know about it until 1842 when Christian Doppler offered the first known physical explanation for the phenomenon that he saw with sound. And it wasn't until 1929 when Edwin Hubble came up with his famous Hubble's Law that we were finally able to use it for something. Oh, that's the same guy that they named the Space Telescope after. That's the, the Hubble Space Telescope, not the Edwin Space Telescope. I don't know if that's a thing there. Yes. Speaking of which, what possible uses could there be of this phenomenon? Well, you see, an extremely simplified version is that Hubble's law is the correlation between how far away things are and redshift, eh? So we can see not only if objects are moving away from us, but also if they're moving away from each other too, eh? Fascinating. And are they moving away from us? Yep, almost every single one of them. In fact, most everything in the universe is very, very quickly moving away from us and everything else, eh? Now, hold on. I thought that light is the constant speed limit of the universe. Uh, pardon me if this is a stupid question, but how can light be a different wavelength if the relative velocity increases? Wouldn't that mean that light is traveling faster than the speed of light? Well, there's the question of the day, bud. First, let me say that the Doppler redshift applies to everything in our galaxy, like stars and planets and stuff. But as soon as you look at galaxies far, far away, something called cosmological redshift occurs. And yes, on the surface, it does look like light is doing the impossible. But one theory is that it isn't the speed that is increasing, it's the universe itself that is expanding. Which means that light is just increasing its wavelength as the universe expands, eh? It's pretty cool stuff. Well, it looks like I am out of time. If I had more time, I would tell you interesting facts about redshift, like there are actually three different kinds of redshift, the two most common being the ones we discussed today, and the third being gravitational redshifts, but those are generally very small. Now for the question of the day. If you were stuck on a spaceship and only were allowed to bring one book with you, which one would it be? Let me know in the comments. I'm interested to know. Cheerio what what? For destructive creativity, I am the narrator.